Welcome back to FM. <coughs> Welcome back to FM Story. Today we're doing a five-season rebuild of Borussia Dortmund. Dortmund are one of the biggest clubs in German football. However, they've not won as much as you might expect. They did win the Champions League in 1997, but they've only won the Bundesliga five times since it came in in 1963, having won three German championships prior to that as well. The last Bundesliga title came in the 2011-2012 season, and last season they finished second. Despite going into the final day of the season ahead of Bayern Munich, they still managed to end up finishing second. However, the 23-24 season in real life hasn't gone as well, certainly domestically, and Dortmund ended up finishing fifth. They were 27 points behind a Leverkusen side that have had an unbelievable season, but more disappointing probably is the fact that they were 10 points behind a Bayern Munich team who've had one of their worst seasons in recent history. Obviously, things have gone a lot better in the Champions League, where at the time of recording this, they still have the Champions League final to come against Real Madrid. The aim for this rebuild is to do better in season one than Dortmund have done in real life for this season. And then as long as we can keep our key players and make some improvements to the squad, hopefully we can go on and win a Bundesliga or two before the end of the five season rebuild. So without further ado, let's have a look and see what happens. So here we are at Dortmund, obviously as we said they won the Champions League in 1997, they've won the UEFA Cup Winners' Cup in 1966 and to go with the five Bundesligas and the three German Championships before the Bundesliga came in, they've only won five DFB Pokals, the most recent of those was in 2021, so a couple of seasons without winning any trophies. Going into this first season there's eight and a half million available. Um, and a bit of money in the wage budget. Obviously, we're going with the original mode. So all the players that joined Dortmund during the first season in real life are joining in this in this rebuild as well. A slight concern is that our key player is our goalkeeper, which doesn't suggest an awful lot going forward. But let's have a look and see what we've managed to do in the first transfer window. So transfer-wise, we've not done too much. We did try and sign pa uh, Pablo Dybala just to try and add a bit of extra creativity and a bit of extra at the top end of the pitch. In the end he signed uh, a new contract with Roma and stayed there. So the only deal we actually did was to bring Matteo Gabbia in on loan from Milan just to give us an extra body at the back um, just to, to strengthen in depth in the in the centre of defence. Tactically, we're looking at the 4-3-3. I think it suits the players that got the club best. And going into the, the first season, we're second favourites. I mean, Bayern Munich are huge, huge favourites. And if you look at the, the Media Dream 11, they've got nine of the 11. We appear to have the best goalkeeper in the league at the moment in Corbell. However, we've not had the best of starts to the season. Um, we got the DFP Pokal underway with a 4-0 victory. Um, away at Ballingen and then on the opening day of the season we beat Cologne 4-1 at home with the full crew coming up with a couple of goals. We then lost away to Bochum and then went away to Heidenheim and were 2-0 up and really threw it away. We missed a penalty as well and ended up coming away with a 3-2 defeat. So let's go ahead and simulate season one and see how we did. So season one has come to an end and unfortunately we've missed out on the title by two points behind Bayern Munich. Um, looking at the player stats we've done actually reasonably well. Falkrug was the leading goal scorer in the league with 24. Marco Royce and Jaden Sancho at the top of the assist charts as well. Looking at the, the past positions, we obviously we had that pretty poor start, losing two of the first three league games. It took us a little while to climb back up and then we were kind of up and down a bit we hit the top spot a couple of times but then for most of the the second half of the season we've been in second place champions league we we thought we might have had a bit of a difficult group with newcastle and Sevilla being in there in the end um we've we've absolutely dominated the group we've uh won five and um, beating shakta home and away beating Sevilla home and away um 
and actually a pretty big win away at Newcastle. The only game we drew was the home game against Newcastle 3-3. So then going into the last 16, we were drawn against Porto. Um, we drew the first leg 1-1 one, one, and then lost the second leg 2-0 to go crashing out. The DFB Pokal, obviously we saw um, at the start of the season the 4-0 victory over Ballingen. Second round, we then knocked out Nuremberg 2-1. Third round, we ended up beating Magdeburg 3-0. In the quarterfinal, we hammered Ottenson 6-0. And at this stage, we still haven't come across a, a sort of top, top team. And that all ended in the semi-final when we came across Bayern Munich and got beat 2-1. And then Bayern Munich went on to win the DFP Pokal on penalties from second division Hertha Berlin. And we had some players right up there in terms of like Mats Hummels, five five goals, second top scorer, Jaden Sancho, joint most assists with four. Um, but I think we got slightly lucky in the, the draw we got up until the semi-final. Um, but unfortunately, we end season one without a trophy. Looking at the squad, so Fulcrook came up with big with, with 27 goals. And then the next highest was Sancho with 12, who's going back to Man United. Sabitzer with 12, Brandt with 10, and then Matt's almost popped up with 10, but he's leaving at the end of the season as well. Um, and then in terms of the assists, Brandt, Royce and Sancho all coming up big. Um, but I think the concern is, we, I mean, we had a pretty good um, goal difference, certainly in the league. So we were obviously strong at the back, but it feels like we maybe haven't scored enough goals. Um, so that's maybe something we need to address. And then transfer budget-wise, going into season two, we've got 35.43 million. So we've got some money to spend to get some, some players in. We've got some money in the wage budget as well. So let's have a look and see what we managed to do in season two. So transfer-wise, we didn't do an awful lot. Some players are leaving at end of contracts in terms of going out um, and a couple of loan deals. We spent a bit of money on incomings. Firstly, though, we picked up Guido Rodriguez at the end of his Real Betis contract um, just to add some strength in the centre midfield, and particularly that defensive midfield position. And then we were looking at signing players that are going to develop over the, the life of the save. So we picked up Archie Gray from Leeds and we picked up Keenan Yildiz from Juventus. We brought him back to Germany. Um, has a potential to be a really good player. Probably going to take both of them, probably going to take a season or two to, to really sort of hit the stride. Um, but potentially when we come to the end of the, the save, they could be big players for us. And then we brought in uh, Peter Zielinski, um after his contract with Napoli expired, just to add a bit of experience in the centre of that midfield, a bit of quality as well, especially going forward. And then we picked up a couple of loan deals from Chelsea. Firstly, Benoit Badiashile just to strengthen the centre of the defence. And then also Cole Palmer again, just to add a bit more at the top end of the pitch, just to try and add a bit of creativity, a bit of a goal threat as well, potentially. Tactically, we're sticking with the, the 4 3 3. And if we pick the best 11, um, so Zelinski goes into the team, Guido Rodriguez goes into the team, um, the rest of the players kind of sit on the bench. The concerning thing is when you pick the best team that Daniel Marlon goes through the middle rather than Fulcrug, who was the top goal scorer in the league last season. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens throughout the season. Looking at this, this season preview again, um, buying a huge, huge favourite. We've now got two players in the media dream 11. Guido Rodriguez has joined um, Gregor Kobel. And we've had an interesting start to the season. We got hammered 4-1 in the Super Cup by Bayern Munich. We then won 3-0 away against the Verms in the first round of the DFP Pokal. And then we opened, having played the Super Cup against Bayern, we opened with Bayern away on the opening day of the season and went in at halftime 1-1. And then they got a goal straight away in the second half through Sané and came away with a 2-1 victory. But we've, we've bounced back um, a 3-1 victory against RB Leipzig and then a 3-0 victory away from home against Eintracht Frankfurt to put us in a pretty strong position and um, with six points out of nine at the start of season two. So let's go ahead and simulate season two and find out what happens. So 
So season two has seen us take a step back in terms of league position. We actually ended up with more points than we did last season and we were only three points off the top, the top three teams all finishing on 75 points and it been very, very close on goal difference. The one immediate thing I can see is we seem to have scored a lot less goals this season. No one in the top of the goals charts. We've only got Julian Brandt at the top of the assist chart, so that's a, a big concern there. And then in terms of the, the the our performance over the season, we've basically spent most of the season in fourth. Um, a brief flirtation with third and second, and we were top for a couple of weeks. Um, but largely, since halfway through the season, we've been in fourth and stayed there. And the Champions League wasn't exactly a shining success either. Um, we just snuck into the playoffs, uh, into the knockout playoff round, into the, the knockout stages and at all on goal difference ahead of Shakhtar and Feyenoord and Young Boys. Um, we won two games out of the eight. We beat Young Boys, which obviously helped uh, us finish above them. We beat PSV. We drew with Galatasaray and Arsenal. And... We suffered narrow defeats largely against Lille. That's a, a bit of a shocker. But Real Madrid, Juventus, PSG are all going to be tough games. Um, so that saw us into the, the knockout playoff round where we got drawn against Barcelona. Um, we lost the first leg 3-1. We drew the second leg 2-2. And we went out early 5-3 on aggregate. And then the DFP Pokal, obviously we saw at the start of the season the 3-0 victory over Worms. We then beat Eintracht Frankfurt 3-0 in the second round. Uh, we beat Bayern 2-0 in the third round. So the exact, exact opposite of last season where we had a pretty easy draw until we got to Bayern in the semi-final. We've had Eintracht Frankfurt in the second round, Bayern in the third round. We then beat Cologne in the quarter-final. And we hammered Schalke in the, the semi-final to see us through to a final against Leipzig. And unfortunately, we came out on the wrong end of the result. Uh, Leipzig won 3-1, a pretty even-ish game, but they obviously took their chances. They were 2-0 up at half-time. We pulled a goal back through Fulcrug, but presumably as we were pushing for an equaliser, they got the third goal to see them win the trophy 3-1. And yeah, I wasn't half right about the lack of goals we scored. Top scorer in all competitions was Daniel Marlon with 12. Julian Brandt with 11. Reina with 10, Cole Palmer with 10, and then Mikoko with 7. What actually happened was we came back a bit early towards the end of the season. Things weren't going great with the 4-3-3, so we switched to the 4-2-3-1, which seemed to do worse. We went to the 4-2-4, which was even worse than that. In the end, we went back to the 4-3-3, but the idea was to get Mikoku first-team football at that point. We did end the season pretty well. Um... I mean, we lost to Werder Bremen in March. We didn't lose another league game for the rest of the season. But ultimately, it was only good enough for fourth. At least we're still in the Champions League. And we do have a bit of money to spend this season in the transfer budget. They've given us £76 million to spend. There's a bit of room in the wage budget. Um, so let's have a look and see what we managed to do in Season 3. And so season three saw us go pretty big in the transfer window. We were able to do that because Al Ali came in and matched the release clause in Guido Rodriguez's contract. So having signed him on a free transfer at the end of season one, we've then sold him at the end of season two for 64 million. And um, we've also sold Sebastian Haller and sent a couple of players out on loan as well um, who weren't getting first team football. We started our business on free transfers. so. Firstly, we picked up Dominic Calvert-Lewin uh, at the end of his contract with Everton. We then added Taylor Harwood bellis and then Ivan Toney. And the reason for adding Ivan Toney and Dominic Calvert-Lewin, obviously the goal scorers and they scored goals on this game. And we did not score anywhere near enough goals in season two. Then with the money we had in the budget and the money we got for selling Rodriguez, we had plenty of money left over for some strengthening some other areas of the team. So we then went big on Michael Alisi, um, who can play wide, can play as a number 10, is going to create chances for us and hopefully take some as well. 
we, uh, Gregor Corbel as a goalkeeper. So we've then gone in and picked up um, Elias Olafsson from Michelin, um, Icelandic international goalkeeper, just as a backup. It did take about three or four attempts to find a backup that was willing to come in and be a backup. With Guido Rodriguez going, and with Emery Chan getting on a bit, we then went to Benfica and signed Florentino Luis to play in that holding midfield role. Um, and hopefully, as he's still sort of in his mid-twenties, he can maybe get a little bit better as well. Um, and hopefully we can we can do better than we have been doing. So tactically, we're sticking the same as we are. We are actually um, locking in Tom Rother, at left back, who's come through the, the youth academy. He had a, a spell out on loan last season, um, and we just want him to play. Because when we do pick the best 11, it doesn't have him in it. Um, we do look at the team, so Calvert-Lewin goes straight into the team up top. Elise comes in straight into the team, Luis straight into the team as well. I'm slightly surprised that it's Calvert-Lewin and not Tony that goes in straight up the top, but I suspect they'll both end up starting quite a number of games this season. Potentially Calvert-Lewin could even play off the left with Tony through the middle as well. So going into this third season, Bayern are still favourites, we're still second favourites, but everything's a bit tightened up in the in the, the market um, we now don't have a single player in the media dream 11 but we've started the season well um, we won comfortably 7-0 away at Neustadt in the DFB Pokal first round and then on the opening day of the season we beat Borussia Mönchengladbach 5-0 at home we then beat Heidenheim 2-1 away from home and then we beat Cologne 2-0 at home. Um, Dominic Carvalho popped up with three goals early on in his time at the club. And things are going pretty well. And then following a, a pretty disappointing Champions League campaign last season, we've got, I think, a better draw in terms of the league fixtures. So uh, we've obviously got Barcelona. We've got Bayer Leverkusen, who have, have been a bit of a problem in domestic football. Um, we've got Man United and we've got Atletico, but we have... Like Rangers, Shakhtar, Panathinaikos. So hopefully we can pick up enough points from that to at least make it through to the knockout stages. Obviously you'd like to finish in the top eight so you skip around. Um, but given how we struggled to even make it into the knockout stages last um, season, the knockout stages would be would be fine. And let's go ahead and simulate season three and see if we can do any better or come closer to winning a trophy. And so season three ends with another title for Bayer Leverkusen, again with three points off the top. Looking at the goal difference, we've scored more goals this season. Um, and also looking at the player stats, I mean, Elise has really hit the ground running. 21 assists right up there in terms of man of the matches and average rating. Ivan Tony, top goal scorer in the league. Um, so we've done, we've done pretty well. It's our highest points total of the save so far as well. I mean, after the opening day victory where we hammered Munchalabak, the highest we got again was second. And then sort of halfway down, halfway through the season, we dropped out fourth. And then most of the second half of the season, we've been in third and stuck there. Um, we are still developing. I have to say, I'm a lot happier with that this season than last season, just purely because there's more goals. So it looks like there's more of a, a threat to the team. It looks like we might have that end of the pitch. Um, looking pretty good. I mean, we have lost seven games. We lost to Leverkusen. We lost to Hertha Berlin. We lost to Cologne. I mean, they all finished in the, the European places. Mönchengladbach finished outside the European places. Eintracht Frankfurt, Bayern. I mean, we lost, of the seven games, we lost six of them were away from home as well. Um, so we need to maybe do something about our away form. But Overall, I feel like we're progressing, but maybe it's not progressing quickly enough. Champions League, we did better in the league phase. We ended up finishing 10th, so we won four games. We beat Panathinaikos, hammered Panathinaikos. We hammered Shakhtar, and we beat Man United, and we beat Rangers. We drew against Leverkusen in the Champions League, and then we lost three games away from home, and a couple of them pretty comfortably. We got beat um, by Letico and Inter and a 1-0 defeat against Barcelona. That meant we went into the knockout playoff round where we were drawn against Marseille. We drew the first leg 1-1, but won the home leg 3-1 to see us through 
on aggregate. But then we met Real Madrid in the round of 16. We lost the first leg 3 0 at home and then lost the away leg 6 2 to end up going out on aggregate rather embarrassingly 9 2. And then the DFB Pokal, obviously, we, we comfortably dispatched Neustadt in the, the first round. In the second round, we won comfortably away at Braunschweig 3 0. Third round, we beat Elversburg. 1-0 in the quarterfinal we beat Hertha 2-1 and that's the, I mean, the first decent team we've come across in the competition this season then in the semi-final we hammered Darmstadt 6-1 which saw us through to the final against Bayer Leverkusen who we seem to have played so many times this season and finally in this save we have won a trophy we've won the DFP Pokal we won 2-1 after extra time they took the lead and were winning until they had a player sent off. Then Marco Royce popped up with an equaliser, and then Sally Oshkan in extra time with the winner to see us pick up the DFP Pokal. So certainly from a goal scoring point of view, we've been much better. Ivan Tony with 35, Elise with 17, Calvert-Lewin with 16. Um, I mean, Elise has proven to be a, a great signing so far. 17 goals and 26 assists in his first season. Um, and hopefully there's more of that to come in the future seasons. Looking ahead to season four, we've got 63 million in the budget and a bit of bit of wiggle room in the wage budget as well. So going into season four, we've not actually done too much. Um, we've a couple of players left at the end of the contracts, including Nicholas Fulcrook, who hasn't had, really had a look in for the last couple of seasons. Archie Gray went back out on loan and we've sold Kareem Adeyemi um, for 14 million because he hasn't really got anywhere close to the starting lineup. And we didn't do much incoming wise. We did our business very early as well. So the first signing coming in was Sergei Milankovic Savic um, after his contract in Saudi Arabia ended. Just a real quality player. Although he is 31, he's still got a few years left in him. Um, can play at a push in the defensive midfield role, but really that central midfield role driving us forward is what we've signed him for. And then with pretty much all the money we had available in the transfer budget at the start of the transfer window, we've gone and signed Mohamed Simakan from RB Leipzig. Can play right back, can play centre half, at a push, can play in the defensive midfield role as well, um, just to really, really strengthen what we've got as well. So tactically, we're sticking the same um, we have had to nail Tom Rota into the team again because despite the fact that I think he is our best left back, he only played one of the opening five games of the league season or, or of the season. The best 11 takes Rota out. Um, Simakan goes straight into the team. Milinkovic Savic goes straight into the team as well. Um, and really it's starting to look like a, a team that should be serious contenders for the title this season, I think. Looking at the season preview, again, obviously Bayern Munich are favourites. Um, Milinkovic Savic and now Gio, Gio Reyna are in the media dream 11. And as far as the season's concerned, we've had a, a bit of an up and down start to the season. We got hammered by Leverkusen in the Super Cup. Um, we won comfortably in the first round of the DFP Pokal against Trier. Uh, we then had a, a high scoring 6-2 victory against Fortuna Dusseldorf in our opening league game of the season. We then went away to Heidenheim and lost 3-2. Heidenheim away is starting to become a bit of a bogey fixture, um, but we bounced back with a 2-0 victory at home against Wolfsburg to give us six points out of nine to start the season. And then looking ahead to the Champions League campaign, so we've got, I think our, our by far and away, our, our two most difficult games of the, the first two fixtures, um, starting with Juventus and Barcelona, but then relatively it looks a lot more of a straightforward path after that with RB Salzburg, Slavia Prague, Ajax and Benfica. Those two might be a bit difficult. Monaco and Almeria, who've qualified for the Champions League um, to round out the league phase fixtures. So let's go ahead and simulate season four and see if we can make a really strong challenge for the title. So before we get have a look at how we've done the competitions, we're going to start with some transfer activity. So we came back in January just to see if there was anyone that was going to be available 
um, on a free transfer at the end of the contract and found that the board had found some more money for us to spend. So we've gone and in January strengthened the squad further. We picked Curtis Jones up for 21 million from Liverpool. He was one of the players that was going to be out of contract in the summer. And it just made sense to try and add him in January for, for what was the relatively cut price deal for a player of his quality. I mean, you can see he's already worth double that. Um, and it was just to add a bit more quality in that centre of the pitch as well. And then one of the positions we, we've kind of not had as much depth as, as we could have had is at right back. So we ended up picking up um, Van, de, Van de Brompt from RB Salzburg, Belgian international. Um, just to hopefully add a bit of competition and, and a bit of quality in that right back position. We didn't end up changing the tactic. We did just nail in Van der Brompt to play at right back, along with Water to play at left back. And all of that seems to have worked because we have ended the season as the champions of the Bundesliga. We finished nine points clear of Bayern Munich. Um, Ivan Tony again top of the goal scoring charts. Uh, we lost six games this season. Um, and all of them to teams that, or most of them to teams you would think we should be beating. I mean, Stuttgart finished in 12th, we lost to them. We lost to Cologne, who finished 6th. We lost to Augsburg, who finished 5th. Um, we lost away at Bayern Munich. We lost away at Mönchengladbach. Um, and obviously that defeat that we, we saw at the start of the season against Heidenheim. Uh, and we only drew one game, which was at home against Stuttgart, uh, which meant that we of the 17 home games we played this season we won 16 of them we drew one that's the kind of form that wins you um trophies and uh yeah we've we kind of hit the top period sporadically for for a week here or there but we hit the top for good um in game week after game week 20 where we beat Wolfsburg 2-1 and then didn't look back we're top for the rest of the season champions league despite what we thought was a good set of fixtures we've finished 11th in the in the league phase. so obviously we managed to qualify for the knockout stages but um we've got to play them we've had to play in the playoff round we managed to beat benfica ajax salzburg and juventus we drew with almeria and barcelona and then we lost to monaco and slavia prague um i mean slavia prague actually finished ahead of us in the league phase um so they obviously had a good season um, it meant that we went into the knockout playoff round and we were drawn against Bayer Leverkusen. We lost the first leg 3-1. We drew the second leg 0-0 and we got dumped out of the Champions League by a team from our own nation at a very early stage. And I, I wonder if that maybe helped with the quest for the league title as well. And then the DFB Pakal, obviously we saw we beat Trier 5-0 in the first round. And then we actually got knocked out by Fortuna Dusseldorf in the second round. So again, early exit from that. With the early exit from the, the Champions League, it meant from sort of February onwards, we only had the league to focus on. And I think that probably is what was a driving force in us being able to hold on and, and win the, the trophy. I mean, looking at our fixtures, so we went out of the Champions League on the 17th of February and then we won every league game after that. We had 12 league games after that. Uh, we won every single one of them and only conceded four goals in those 12 games. Um, so we were at a bit of a runaway train at the end of the season there. We came away with the trophy and then looking at the squad, we actually, whether it's to do with the, the lack of games in the Champions League or the lack of games in the the DFP Pakal, we didn't score very many goals, or at least we shared them around a bit more. Um, Ivan Tony picked up 30 and 40. Uh, Gio Reyna with 12 goals and 17 assists. Uh, Elise is still with 14 assists, a slight drop off from last season. And then looking ahead to the fifth and final season, we've got 56 million to spend in the transfer budget. So let's have a look and see what we did in the summer leading up to season five. So we've not gone too crazy going into the final um, season of the rebuild. Uh, Schlotterbeck left for Arsenal at the end of his contract. And then we've sold a, a lot of players who 
mostly like in Duranville and Rom. Rom's a player that had come through the youth intake during the save, but wasn't good enough to start in. Um, Duranville hasn't really developed during the save. Julian Brandt, it was a lot of money to turn down for someone over 30. And then Yildiz and Final Gittins have gone out on loan. In terms of the incomings, firstly, to replace Schlotterbeck, we've got Roger Ibanez coming in um, at the end of his contract in Saudi Arabia to play centre-half immediately sort of becomes our best centre half at the club and then to provide a bit of strength and depth in that defensive midfield role we picked up Simon Sorm at the end of his contract with Palmer um, decent player Swiss international um, and can hopefully do a job for us this season we also picked up Martin Wittek just to give us another option in the centre of defence can also play that holding midfield role if we need him to and then finally we had a lot of money in the in the budget so we were looking at a midfield or wide player that could improve us firstly we tried to sign Javi Simons who was transfer to the PSG he went to Real Madrid instead and then we then tried to sign Pedri who was transfer listed at Barcelona he went to PSG instead so we then spent the money on Javi Guerra um, who can play in that defensive midfield role or he can play in the central midfield as well tactic wise We've not changed the formation at any point during the save. It seems to be seems to have started to work. We've nailed Javi Guerra into the team just because of the opening five games this season. He hasn't played a single one of them. Um, and having spent 72 million on him, I think we need to see him in the team. If we pick without restriction, it actually moves him into the centre midfield, which is interesting because he hasn't played yet this season. Um, Ibanez comes straight to the team. Actually, Vitic would come into the team in the, the best 11 with Simakan moving up to right back um, so obviously hopefully he'll get quite a bit of, of football this season looking at the season preview again by Munich are the favourites we've only got one player in the dream 11 which is Ibanez um, but hopefully we've got a good enough squad to come back and, and retain the title we haven't exactly started the season particularly well we got hammered in the Super Cup by a glad back we then beat Sandhausen in the first round of the DFP Pokal. We drew 1-1 with Leverkusen in our opening league game. We then got beat by Werder Bremen. But we managed to get three points on the board by beating Union Berlin 2-1. Um, All the goals came late in that game. Dominic Calvert-Lewin got the opener for us. Then they equalised and then basically Giovanni Reina went up the other end and scored. We haven't really made an impact in... European football um, during this rebuild and looking at the fixtures we've been handed for the league phase I don't know that we're going to make an impact this season as well obviously Atletico and PSG to start with Tottenham, Liverpool all going to be tough tough games so let's go ahead and simulate this fifth and final season and see if we can retain our title And we were certainly able to retain that title. In the end, we finished 17 points clear of Bayern in second. We were 28 points clear of Leverkusen in third. And uh, just a, a real quality season. We only lost one league game this season, which was actually that second league game of the season away at Werder Bremen. Um, we drew four games, including both games against Leverkusen and won 29 games to end the season with 91 points. We hit the top after game week 10 when we beat Hertha Berlin 4-1 and did not look back at all. Top of the table for the rest of the season and comfortably champions. Champions League, as we suggest, as we sort of thought, um, it wasn't going to be our year with that league phase fixtures. I mean, we've actually managed to even underperform the low expectations I had for the season. Um, we managed not to qualify for the knockout stages. We were in good company because Juventus didn't manage to qualify either. Um, but after eight games, we won two against Copenhagen and Tottenham. We drew against Young Boys. And then we lost five games, including a couple of hammerings by Benfica and PSG. And then the DFP Pokal. Obviously, last season we went out early in the Champions League and the DFP Pokal and it helped us win the, the title. That wasn't the case this season. Um, we... As we saw, we won the, the opening round against Sandhausen pretty comfortably, 6-0. In the second round, we beat Magdeburg, 3-0. The third round, we knocked out Hertha, 
in the quarter final we hammered Heidenheim at home. Thankfully that was the home game because I think it was an away game based on what we've done against them in the league. I think we would have gone crashing out at that stage. Then in the semi-final we beat Hoffenheim 2-1. And in the final we faced Leverkusen and came away with a comfortable 4-0 victory. Uh, we were 2-0 up at half time. Ivan Tony with two goals in the first half. And then Sergei Milinkovic Savic and Giovanni Reina with a couple of goals in the second half to put the icing on the cake and end the rebuild with a double. So over the five seasons, we've won two league titles and two DFP Pokals. Looking at the squad for this season, I mean, Ivan Tony again, 27 goals. Milinkovic Savage with 18 and 12 assists. Reina with 12 and 15 assists. Curtis Jones with 12 and 14 assists. Even Javi Guerra popping up from that defensive midfield role with 11 goals. And then Elise popping up with 16 assists for a, a big contribution this season. He only played 27 games because he broke his ankle midway through the season. And so our five seasons at Dortmund have come to an end. It took us a while to get going. We were never that far off the league title, uh, but the first three seasons league-wise, we, we did struggle a bit. Um, but we've ended the, see the save with two league titles, two DFP Pokals, and with a squad there that should be able to go on and, and carry on seriously seriously challenging for trophies overall in the end i think that was pretty successful like i said it probably took a while to get going we did need to do quite a lot of surgical work to the squad to make sure that we could score enough goals and then keep enough clean sheets to to really compete but to end the rebuild with two titles two cups pretty successful the only slight disappointment would be we never really made a, a decent run in europe but overall Two league titles, first league title since 2012. Two DFP Pokals. Can't really ask for much more than that. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you for the next rebuild.